Hello, hello, hello. Can everyone hear me all right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, hold on. This light is crazy. But um, let me just hold on, just absorb the moment because this is kind of awesome. All right. So let me just tell you a little bit about my story. So I'm easily inspired. Okay, you can put me in a room with 90 social entrepreneurs, innovators, change makers, nonprofit leaders, and they could tell me a 30 second pitch story about what they do and how they're changing the world, and I'll be like, damn, I wanna be just like you. <laughs> and I was like, and that's, and that's basically how I am. And as I go to more and more of these conferences and all to these networking events and, and really speaking to these social entrepreneurs and innovators, I find myself asking, you pitch your 30-second story and tell about how you're changing the world, but you never talk about your failures. How come you don't pitch your challenges? Because changing the world, from my point of view, has been so hard. <laughs> and that you tell me and influence me and tell me that it's easy. And so five years ago, when I was in college, I thought it was easy. So my pitch to you today is not a pitch of just success. It's a pitch of failing and how important that is in terms of changing the world. So one, one instance, right, in terms of my first attempt to make a genuine difference. Started in college, along with a couple of friends of mine, we decided that we wanted to start a computer lab in a rural village in the Philippines. And the idea was that if we were to provide computer access to these rural children, they would then have a better and quality education. So lo and behold, we were so motivated, gung-ho, six months, it took us to raise the amount of money needed to, to get the laptops, the computers, and the plane tickets to the Philippines. We went door to door, dorm to dorm, collecting pennies. Eventually, we found ourselves in the Philippines. Okay? And then two things happened when we arrived in the Philippines. We arrived in our neighborhood, and the first thing that I found out in that neighborhood was that a child who, was, who lived in the neighborhood where we were going to start this computer lab she was actually abducted, and she was later found without her eyes and without her organs because she was a victim of organ trafficking. Okay? And this, was, this, this rang an alarm because we were an after-school program for these children, and naturally, the parents who were scared, they asked us, how are you going to keep our children safe as they come to, your af to the after-school program? I had no answer. I don't know because I didn't think about it. So that's one thing. Okay, all right, that's, that's a setup, that's, that's a slight setback. We will think about that. We're problem solvers. Second thing, we were setting up the computer labs and we finally got it ready. We had the legal, the, the, the software, the educational things that, that we needed. And all of a sudden, the teacher came to us and asked us, when are you going to train us? And I, and I, and I answered, and I was in shock. I was like, training? This is supposed to be bring magical educational quality <laughs> opportunities to your children by providing computer access. And then they asked, what is this going to look like in two years? And I had no answer. And at, at those two moments, when I stayed in the Philippines, I was just, I felt unfulfilled. I felt that my dreams of making a difference in this world was, was so short-sighted. And I, this was an ultimate failure for me. And so I came back and I reflected. I stayed in my room. And you could tell like, from, from the way I walk. I'm, I'm, I'm usually cheerful, but I, I lost that swag, right? <laughs> and, and for me, right, I had reflected a lot. And I thought about what were the three key issues here that, that I could have solved. And that was my own particular failure. One is passion, OK? I, t I get this a lot from all my mentors, from my colleagues, my friends. Follow your passion, follow your passion, okay? To my bones, I am all about doing social good. But that's not enough, because passion is not enough. I wish someone told me, follow your passion and build change, because you build change. And I didn't know that. You, build, you take your passion, you translate it into something tangible, a product, a service, an enterprise, a movement, and that's how you make a difference, because that's everlasting. Second is intent. My intent was to bring this computer access to these children for magical educational opportunities. <laughs> but then I found out that this wasn't enough. This is, this is short-sighted intent. Because what I was doing was bringing Band-Aid technology solution to an educational system that was failing at so many different levels, and I didn't even think about that. My intent was short-sighted. And impact, 
I was so happy that finally we got through customs, we brought all these computers and set up this lap in this laptop. And at the end of the day, the question was, how was how are the children benefiting from this? Because they weren't. And I had to be real about these failures. And you know what's up with failure? Failure hurts and it sucks so much. <laughs> it sucks because it, it makes you feel uncomfortable. It paralyzes you because all you could think about is like, what could I have done differently? What could I have done? It, it paralyzes you to the point of inaction, and therefore stops you from making a difference. And then you begin to question yourself: Oh my gosh, am I in the right place right now? Was I supposed to take six months in raising funds to bring this laptop? Is this supposed to be? Should I just be a banker and not be a change maker and just and just go that route? And so that was that was painful and very uncomfortable for me, and that lasted for 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 months. But for change maker, if you let it, if you are creative, if you are determined, and if you have if you know your purpose with confidence, failure can be beautiful. Failure can be an awesome tool for you to change the world. In this particular case, this failure made me realize that. Com- That educational problems in the developing world is complex, and that bringing laptops and computers is not enough. This particular failure failure told me that hey, you are at the bottom. Now you could rise to the occasion and prove yourself, and that's powerful, and that's rare, and that's a moment that I love. It humbles you. It tells you that you don't know enough. As much as all these nonprofit leaders give you their thirty-second pitch and tell you that they are changing the world just like that, it tells you that that is not that easy. That you have to be humble of what you don't know. So back to passion, intent, and impact. Because if you flip the, these around, failures they then become life lessons, and that's what's powerful about about failures. So what I what did I do? Learning to build with passion. As a result of like just thinking about it for a couple months, I found uh, with uh, with other social entrepreneurs and really amazing、uh, folks in the Philippines, e kindling,、uh, and basically education kindling. A mind is not a vessel to be filled, but a flame to be kindled, right? And that's how we got our name. And basically, beyond providing laptops to schools, we deploy, design, develop, and engage. And very shortly, it's deploy learning technologies designed for the bottom of the pyramid, for under for for developing countries. Design learning activities that are joyful for students, so they would love to come to classroom and, and use the, the, the technologies. We develop talent, teacher talent, because computers will never ever replace teachers because they are mentors, mothers, nurses, carings, among other things. So they are central. And then we engage communities. So through passion, I build, we build a social enterprise. Intent. My intent was to give this magical educational opportunity. That's not what it's about. It's not about the computer. It's the child. This is about recreating educational systems that inspire a love for learning. And that's what that's what we strive for at eKindling. And beyond impact, it, this is beyond technology, right? It's all about how are we bringing value to and service to these children that we achieve. Uh, to 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 serve, hope to serve.、Uh, so what we do is we prepare children to become the problem solvers of an increasingly digital and connected world. And what that means is that in the Philippines, there's 13.7 million children in the Philippines, one million of, of which are out of school and dropouts. Now in a country that is plagued by poverty, what if these 13.7 million million children become the geniuses, the inventors, the creatives, the entrepreneurs, the social innovators? That is what we're trying to shoot for through our educational and learning philosophy. And so, what happened? Right, we had that failure earlier on in my in in、uh, my career, my quest to to change the world. Now, and as of December 11, we launched 100 XL laptops in two elementary schools on the rural fishing islands of the Philippines. And so, those are some of our students. And here, actually, as of December, because our attitude is to build with passion, to build, build, build. Now we are about to launch another 750 XL laptops in seven public schools, serving over a thousand children. And I couldn't be at this point in my life if I didn't have that failure. And because it's extremely powerful. And so that's me, right there. I'm the guy in the blue, and one of my favorite pictures because one of the 
like, what are they pointing at? And I say, they're pointing at their future. Uh, you see? <laughs> so, so for you would be social entrepreneurs and innovators and change makers that are here in the room that are thinking about how they're going to make, make a difference. Understand that failure is inevitable and it is part of the roller co coaster journey of change making. So embrace it. Embrace it with confidence, with courage. And ask yourself, in, in terms of how I ask myself, what is your intent? What solutions are you building through your passion? And what is your impact? And lastly, and this is something that I, that I just want to talk about with, with the social entrepreneurs in the room. We live in a culture that really fears failure. One misstep, one wrong side turn, or anything like that that would, that would derail you from your project, we barely talk about it. Why? Because we don't get the funding that will prevent people from supporting you. But we have to be honest about our failures. We need to have an open dialogue in the social sector because if we were to have this open dialogue, we would not reinvent the flat tire if we were to learn from each other's failures. We would support each other more as, as we learn about each other's struggles and challenges. So changing the world is a sexy idea. <laughs> very sexy, very romantic, you love it. But understand that it is challenging that it will take persistence and true heart to make a difference. And I will leave you with this. With honesty and true humility, what I have to offer you today are stories of my failure. And this one last thought, only the real failure is to live without it. Thank you. Yeah.